Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss how to apply KMODIT's clustering algorithm on the given data set so that we can form the clusters. This is the solved example number one. The link for other examples is given in the description below. In this case, we have been given a data set with 10 data points where X and Y are the two attributes here. Given this particular data set, we need to apply KMODIT clustering algorithm to form two clusters here. That means the value of K is equal to to here. To find the distance between the data point and medoid, we need to use Manhattan distance formula over here. Now, the first step of k medoid clustering algorithm is to select two medoids. That is, uh, in this case, I want to create two clusters. The meaning of that one is I need to select two data points as the medoids here. Now, the question is how to select those particular two, two data points. In this case, uh, we will select those particular data points randomly. The first data point selected is 3 comma 4. I will name it as C1. The second data point selected is 7 comma 4 that is named as C2 in this case. Both these particular data points are one among these particular data points given to us. So once you select this particular two medoids, the next step is to calculate the distance between these medoids to these particular data points. Now how to calculate that particular distance? To calculate that particular distance as stated in the problem definition, we need to use the Manhattan distance formula. If x1, y1 and x2, y2 are the two data points, the distance between these two is calculated using Manhattan distance formula, something like this. The Manhattan distance is always equal to cardinality of x1 minus x2 plus cardinality of y1 minus y2 in this case. Now I will try to calculate the distance from this particular data point 2,6 to this particular 3,4 here y1 is 4, y2 is 4, 4 minus 4 that is equal to 0 here. So that is what I have written. Similarly, we need to calculate the distance from each of these particular data points to this particular medoid that is C1 here. So once you calculate the distances, they look something like this. Once you calculate the distance from these particular data points to the first medoid, the same thing has to be repeated with respect to second medoid here. That is, we need to calculate the distance from 2,6 to second medoid that is 7 comma 4 and the same thing should be repeated for all these particular data points. So once you calculate the distances, they look something like this. Once you calculate the distance from these particular medoids to the data points, we need to assign these particular data points to one of these particular clusters. That can be done with respect to this particular distances. If you compare these two distances, that is 3 and 7, 3 is smaller, that is with respect to C1. So that is the reason we will assign this particular 2,6 to C1 here. Similarly, if you go with the second one, 0 and 4, between these two, 0 is smaller. Again, that is equal with respect to C1 here. So 3,4 is assigned to C1 here. The same thing has to be repeated to each of these particular data points. Once you do this particular assignment, they look something like this. If you take this particular example, 5 and 1, 1 is smaller, 1 is with respect to C2. So that is the reason we have assigned this particular 7 comma 3 to C2 here. So this is how actually we need to assign the data points to one of these particular clusters. So once you do this particular assignment, uh, the first, second, third and fourth data point belongs to this particular cluster one. Remaining six data points belongs to this particular cluster C2 here. So that is what I have written in this particular step. Once you get these particular clusters, the next step is to calculate the total cost of these particular clusters over here. So in this case, uh, 3 comma 4 from first cluster is the medoid, 7 comma 4 is the medoid from second cluster. That is what we need to remember. Now the question comes in front of us is how to calculate the total cost. To calculate the total cost, first we need to calculate the cost from this particular medoid to each of these particular data points. So cost from 3 comma 4 to 2 comma 6, cost from 3 comma 4 to 3 comma 8, cost from 3 comma 4 to 4 comma 7. Similarly, we need to calculate the cost from 7 comma 4 to 6 comma 2, 7 comma 4 to 6 comma 4 and so on. So once you get those particular individual cost, we need to add all those particular cost so that you will be able to get the total cost here. So individual cost can be calculated using this formula that is cost of C comma X where C is the method here and X is the data point which is equal to summation of I cardinality of CI minus XI over here. So once you use this particular formula, you will get the individual cost that is from 3,4 to 2,6, 3,4 to 
Similarly, we have to do it for all other possibilities and then we need to add all those things so that you will be able to get the total cost here. So the first cost is from 3,4 to 2,6. That is what I have written here. The second one is from 3,4 to 3,8. That is what I have written. 3,4 to 4,7. That is what I have written here. Similarly, when it comes to second cluster, from 7,4 to 6,2, 7,4 to 6,4 and so on. So everything I have written here. Now we need to calculate this individual cost. Cost of 3,4, 2,6. So here, uh, the first one is uh, 3, cardinality of 3 minus 2, that is equivalent to 1 here, plus cardinality of 4 minus 6. Cardinality of 4 minus 6 is equivalent to how much? 2 here. So 1 plus 2 is equivalent to 3. So the first cost is equivalent to what? 3 in this particular case. Similarly, when it goes to the second one, cardinality of 3 minus 3 is equivalent to 0, plus Cardinality of 4 minus 8 is equivalent to 4 here. So the total cost of this one is equivalent to 4. Similarly, we have to do it for all these things. They look something like this over here. Once you add all this particular thing, you will get the total cost of these particular clusters, which is equivalent to 20 in this case. Now, as a part of uh, k metroid cluster algorithm, in the third step, we will select uh, one data point apart from these two uh, metroid. That is 3,4 is the current metroid and 7,4 is the another metroid here. Apart from these two, we will select one of these particular data point as the metroid here randomly. And what we do here is uh, we will replace that particular metroid. That is in this case, uh, 3,4 and 7,4 are already metroids. I have randomly selected 7,3 as the new metroid. What we do here is we will replace one of the existing metroid with respect to this one. So in this example, I will replace this uh, C2 that is uh, 7,4 with respect to this O that is 7,3 here. So once I do that particular thing, I will get the new metroid says C1 is equivalent to 3,4 that is as usual and this C2 is replaced with O. That's the reason it looks O is equivalent to 7,3 here. Now once you get these particular two new metroids, again we need to calculate the distance from these particular metroids to these particular data points. Again the same formula we have to use that is Manhattan distance formula. In this case, we have already calculated the distance from 3,4 to all these particular data points in the previous step. So there is no need to calculate it. I will replace those particular uh, values over here directly. Now coming back to this one, we need to calculate the distance from second metroid that is 7,3 to each of these particular data points. I will show one calculation. The first data point is 2,6 and the metroid is equivalent to 7,3 here. So the distance from 2,6 to 7,3 is equivalent to Cardinality of 2 minus 7, that will be equivalent to 5 here, plus cardinality of 6 minus 3. 6 minus 3 is equivalent to 3 here. So if I add these two things, I will get 8 as the distance here. So that is what I have written here. Similarly, we need to calculate the distance from 3,4 to 7,3, 3 3,8 to 7,3 and so on. So once you calculate it, they look something like this. Once you calculate the distances uh, from these uh, new metroids to these particular data points, we need to assign these particular data points to one of these particular clusters here again. So if you look at these particular distances, 3 and 8, 3 is the smaller here, hence 2,6 will be assigned to this particular C1. So that is what you can see here. Similarly, when you go to this particular second one, between 0 and 5, 0 is the smaller. Again, this particular data point will be assigned to C1 here. If you look at these two distances, 5 and 2, 2 is smaller here. So 2 is with respect to O. Hence, this particular data set, data point is assigned to this particular metroid O here. The same thing will be repeated for all the data points. Once you assign these particular data points to the clusters, uh, the new clusters looks something like this. This will be the C1 and this will be O over here. Now, once you calculate these particular new clusters, we need to calculate the new cost for this particular clusters. That is with respect to C1 as the metroid and O as the metroid, we have got the new clusters. We need to calculate the total cost of these particular clusters here. Again, the same approach we follow. In this case, 3,4 is the metroid from first cluster. 7,3 is the metroid from the second cluster over here. Now we need to calculate the individual cost that is from 3,4 to 2,6, from 3,4 to 3,8, from 3,4 to 4,7, from cluster 1, from cluster 2, from 7,3 to 6,2, 7,3 to 6,4 and so on. 
once you calculate those particular individual cost we need to add all those particular costs so that you will be able to get the new or you can say that the current total cost over here so that is what i have written in this particular step so once you add those particular cost the once you calculate it and add all those things you will get 22 as the total cost for these new clusters over here based on these particular the current total cost and the previous uh, total cost we will decide whether i should go with these new metroids or i should go with the previous metroids over here so that can be done with the help of uh, this particular formula that is s is equal to current total cost minus previous total cost current total cost is equal to 22 previous is 20 if i subtract 20 from 22 i will get 2 here this 2 is greater than 0 the meaning is the current total cost is more than the previous total cost hence replacing c2 with respect to o is not a good idea here rather than replacing c2 with o we would have gone with the c2 because that particular clusters have given us the minimum total cost over there so that's the reason the final medoids will be c1 is equal to 3 comma 4 and c2 is equal to 7 comma 4 that is the previous medoid in this case this is not o so based on these two methods we have already calculated the clusters that is uh, c1 is equal to so and so and c2 is equal to this is the cluster here so this is how actually you can apply the k metroid clustering algorithm for the given data set so that you can form the clusters in this case i hope the concept is clear if you like the video do like and share with your friends press the subscribe button for more videos press the bell icon for regular updates thank you for watching